Welcome to Golden Mastermind Seminars Radio with your host, Jeffrey Combs. Jeffrey Combs, good afternoon. It is 2 for Tuesday day. It is my privilege and pleasure to be here with you on the GMS podcast. It is Tuesday, August 8th, year of our Lord, 2023. The history of this Facebook Live is actually anchored in a late afternoon call that I started in 1998. It was the 1998 Mastermind Alliance call. It was called the AMG Achievement Mastermind Group call that I started at 5 o'clock on Tuesdays. I eventually moved that within a couple of years. I moved it to Tuesday night, and then it was the Tuesday night More Heart Than Talent Mindset call. I know that Matt Smith and Beth Devine, you were on that call many times back in the day. The More Heart Than Talent Mindset call. Then I eventually moved that to a a Tuesday afternoon on 2018 Facebook Live in the event of live video. So back, I was telling my wife last night that back in the day, I would sometimes have as many as 500 people on my Tuesday night call as I interviewed Jim Rohn, Mark Victor Hansen, John Asraf, Dr. Judith Orloff, Susan Sly, uh, just to name a few of the people that Dr. Joe Dispenza, let's see, many, many exceptional people back in the day. So today's topic is going to be on Breathe, Release, and Let Go. Now, here's a book that I am rereading for about the 20th time. However, in consciousness, as you continue to improve and evolve, as you reread books and have a better understanding and higher consciousness, you'll find meanings that you missed when you originally read the book. And that's a byproduct of consistently elevating your levels of consciousness. And so on today's Facebook Live, the topic is being able to understand the context, even though the simplicity is there of breathe, release, breathe comma, release, comma, and let go. What does that actually mean for you? It, what the context of that is to be able to access that anchor of letting go, be able to use that breath cycle to let go so that you're able to interrupt the fight or flight mechanism that takes you from zero to 90 and then you find yourself in resentment, you find yourself in regret, you find yourself pissed off. And so if you find yourself in that energy, then in this right here, this mind-body prescription right here, as you begin to understand that, then you'll be able to separate your feelings. And that that's what that that's the breakthrough that you require to understand. It's the skill set of separating the feeling from the events so that you are not the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. So you're not in fight or flight. So you're not attracting your reality, perpetrators, violators. So you're not in conflict with your husband, wife, teammate, lover, soulmate, or any multitude of situation so that you're able to easily and effortlessly learn how to interrupt the fight or flight feeling that your body reacts to the stimulus. I've coached some exceptional people over my career who over time, after I give, I give them the context, give them the guidance, then they practice the simple discipline one day at a time. It's like shooting a free throw, playing golf, any sport, any artistic endeavor where there's a repetition and experience to the situation, then you go from good to great to exceptional. And if you become exceptional at letting go, your life will have so many improvements. It'll be amazing for you because most importantly, you'll begin to change who and what you attract. You'll be in less conflict with your family. You'll be in less contact with conflict with your children. You'll be in less conflict with teammates. You'll be in less conflict with the universe. So when you encounter the bizarreness of what's going on in today's world, and whoever becomes the president in 2024, you're not in fight or flight. And you know who some of the possibilities for 2024 are. And I mean, it, if you allow yourself to get overwhelmed or if you get in anxiety, fear, and doubt, I mean, you're, you'll be in the future of what, what hasn't happened. The objective is to be right here and right now in the present so that you can live in the solution. And breathing techniques are, very, are skills that you learn to master. If you've lived in a short breath cycle, 
most of your life, like that was me until I learned how to really breathe, release, and let go. If you live in that short breath cycle, then you'll react to stimulus quickly. Now for me, I reacted in anger. So the anger family was very close to me. That was anger, hate, resentment, frustration, disappointment, and rage. And then the angry all the time. I used to read a book by Efron Potter, a husband and wife team, called Angry All the Time. Eventually in 2015, I wrote my own book called The Anger Factor, which is a history of my life with anger and then the process of letting go of it. And so anger is also anchored in rejection and abandonment. So if you grow up in a home of alcoholic parents, there's abuse, there's sexual abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and most importantly, unpredictability, then you are going to be living in your own unpredictability in fight or flight. Then if you live in a lot of anxiety, fear, and doubt, there's a high probability that you will repress those feelings, and then you will bury them alive. There's a book that I used to read called Feelings Buried Alive Never Die, and understanding that, how the events shape your feeling. So this is what creates anxiety, fear, and doubt. Anxiety is the hypervigilance. Fear is the future. Doubt is the space that you live that's safe to procrastinate. And so as you begin to understand the distinction between anxiety, the hypervigilance, which is a byproduct of the trauma and the brain fog. And that's the worry about the future that hasn't happened. And as you begin to let go of that, this is what hinders so many business owners who want to own a business. They want to be free. They want to have a business from their home, but they spend most of their time getting ready to get ready, procrastinating, avoiding, and training, not actualizing the skill set, not prospecting the leads, not creating the outcome, not learning the repetition, the experience, instead, of, and they treat it like a hobby, then they don't get paid and then disappointed. So in that, when you feel that anxiety that goes up under your knee, underneath your neck, that's the byproduct of fight or flight. Now in this book, Dr. John Sarno breaks this down, how this affects the back and the low back. The low back is the lumbar. And the more you understand the seven vertebrae of the lumbar, the 12 verbra vertebrae of the thoracic, and then the seven vertebrae of the neck, and you understand the mind-body connections, you will seldom be in back pain because you will know how to breathe, release, and let go. Sarno wrote this book in 1996. This, was, this book absolutely changed my life. I was experiencing migraine headaches for six years in my recovery. And I understood it later. I didn't understand it now because I didn't have the alcohol. I put myself under a lot of pressure. I felt like I was behind in life. And I was living in this hypervigilance brain fog with no outlet for my neck and back. And my neck and back would subluxate, means it would go out of place every single day for six years. C1 and C2 on the non, I'm right-handed, so the left side, that's the atlas and the axis, also known as C1 and C2, would go out on command. I would have a chiropractic adjustment. I would feel the instant gratification of the release of the nitrogen, which would be the equivalent of the dopamine high, but I would relapse right back out into another subluxation, and I became dependent upon chiropractic adjustments. And as I begin to have a better understanding of also, the TMJ that I had, right hand, the side, the grind, the clench, the clench teeth at night. And what, what is the cause of that? The effect is a headache. The effect is pressure. But the cause is not being good enough left over from resid residual events that I was holding on to. You'll have your own cause and effect situation. And if you have a better understanding of why you do what you do, then you can create peace in the relationships you've attracted, in the people that you've surrounded yourself with, and you, you can begin to move into a higher level of letting go so you don't attract your reality, the same situation to fulfill the same set of feelings. If you tell yourself you're a good person, and then you're in these traumatic relationships that have a tremendous amount of drama, and then they're inflamed, the inflamed family environment, or you're constantly stuffing your feelings because your partner or your boss or your children or whoever it is that's in your circle of influence 
aren't doing what makes sense or aren't doing what you want them to do, well, that's going to be a byproduct of why you do what you do and why you attract what you attract. As you are able to accept the situation for what it is, as you allow yourself to be rigorously honest about the situation, you can move into the, into the courage to address the situation. You cannot access courage when you live in denial. Denial is the, I don't know, I don't understand, I'm gonna pass the buck to someone else. I'm gonna go ahead and be resentful of this person rather than address me and how I put myself in this situation. As you're able to have that understanding, that awareness, as you begin to let go, that separation between the feelings and the events that shape them, that's where breathing becomes such an asset for you. Because that breath that you're missing, that's the breath from the vagus nerve to the gut. If, you don't, if you're not able to access that because you're in acute fight or flight all day, that's what will lead to procrastination and avoidance because of that rigid fight or flight you're in. As you begin to access your body in a relaxed body is the affirmation. I'm breathing, releasing, and letting go. I say this at least 20 times a day. I write it. I finish every post with it. It's become actualized. This becomes a reflex to breathe, release, and let go. It allows me not to go from zero to 90. I go from zero to 20. And then I'm able to come back to park and I'm able to reset myself by breathing, releasing, and letting go so that I am no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. Breathe, release, and let go. As you're able to be that man, be that woman, then you are not the mind-body connection to the events that shape the feelings. So on the syllabus here today, this is the handwritten one I write for every every call, every Facebook Live that I do on Tuesdays. And then this is the email version of what goes out. So on point two, right here, it's the events that shape the feelings. This is going to require rigorous honesty so you understand how the events that you grow up in and the events that you continue to, to live in how they've left a person, how, it, how it's left a lasting set of feelings. And as you're able to let go of these feelings that you have held on to, these feelings of fight or flight, then once again, you are no longer the mind body connection to the events that shape the feelings. So that you are you and you are free. And you can take that long, deep breath. You can come back in, you can be grounded, that's the term. Instead of being on the ceiling, you're right here, you're grounded, and you're able to look the situation for what it is, and you're able to let go. Now, here, now I grew up, and now I wasn't really in trouble as a kid. I got in a lot more trouble as an adult. So I became worried about the outcome that hadn't happened. Getting in trouble became a chronic worry of mine. What did I say? What did I do? So I was a blackout drinker. This, this compounded the situation because of the things I would find out I did that I didn't remember doing. And I was, I mean, I did a lot of bizarre things as an addict. I mean, I would check my body parts to see if they were all there. I'd wake up in bizarre places having no idea. I would be wondering what I did the night before in a hangover blackout. And so getting in trouble became a way of life. And as I moved into business ventures, it would be the same thing. I would worry about my teammates. Did I alienate them? Did I say this? Did I do this right? Did I do this wrong? It was the chronic emotional chatter that goes on in the analytical egoic mind, the left brain. I've been releasing that over the last several years. If you have a narcissist that you grow up with, or a narcissist that you date, mate, or marry, who uses gaslighting and guilting techniques, that's doubt casting. So guilt creates doubt. And so if you have someone in your circle of influence that uses these guilting techniques, you always do this, you never do this. If you have someone in that circle of influence, it's important that you be real clear on what, what that's about and you become skilled at breathing, releasing, and letting go. And you begin to have clear boundaries with these people and you begin to separate them. And if you have attracted the most bizarre mates to your reality that you've dated, mated, and married, or if you've attracted the angriest person in the building, or if you went into 
the stadium and you attracted the most screwed up person in the stadium to you for you to date, mate, and marry, that's for you to understand why you do that. That's the breathe, release, and let go. Be rigorously honest. Start to adapt and adjust to that. If you're in that relationship, do whatever you can to create clear boundaries. Find an exit strategy or a system. If you have a boss like that, if you have, if you have a mentor or whatever it is you have, you want to be able to own your responsibility in that and be able to breathe, release, and let go in that. Own your character defects. So the honesty component of your character defect is to be able to understand, okay, well, these events shape these feelings. I'm now 25, 35, 45. I don't have to live like this anymore. I'm willing to access the courage to create the simple, subtle changes one day at a time so I can let go. And let it, someone asked me today, how do I let go of being right? Well, you let go of being right by realizing being right is righteousness. And the ego always wants a little more. And what does getting being right do for most people? Nothing other than create conflict. Because if you live in an ego that has to be right and you're sensitive and defensive, then you're going to be in react mode most of the time. And you're going to want justice and you're going to want righteousness and you want an apology and, and you want this to happen. And when you, when you can let go of this, then you attract this less frequently. When you're able to recognize about this about yourself, when you recognize that, you, that that is you and you're able to let go of that, it will bring you so much more peace. And when you, when you engage with a narcissist, they unequivocally require you to banter with them. They require you to validate, justify, and explain yourself. And if you're addicted to that validating, justifying, explaining yourself, you're going to be in a lot of conflict and you'll attract it over and over and over. And if you still have a parent that you're still in that relationship with and you haven't addressed it, now's the time to be clear and set very clear boundaries and not let other people use guilt and other narcissistic tactics to affect you emotionally. And if you have brain fog left over, you can absolutely let go of that over time because what you're going to be letting go of is the trauma the breathing releasing and letting go whether you're 24 or 44 what's important is that you recognize your character defects you begin to be less critical of yourself and more honest you become less critical of the people in your circle of influence and you own your responsibility for your role in it because once you re once you start to recognize your role. You can't do anything about someone else. You can't control anyone else, but you can definitely let go of your feelings of abandonment, rejection, your feelings of not being good enough, your feelings and trauma bonds that you've held on to, your feelings of not being able to be your best self, your feelings of procrastination, your under-earning, under-achieving, these situations. It, it, just like Stephanie said, it's never too late to address the situation. I never had a healthy relationship until I was 56 years old. I continued to attract the same situation over and over to fulfill the same set of feelings of not being good enough. When I started to have a better understanding of the cause and the effect of why I do what I do, I started to change who and what I attracted. In business, I didn't have the same situation. It was more in some of my personal intimate relationships that I would attract the conflict, I would attract the perpetrator violator, I'd be defending myself, explaining myself, feeling less than, then feeling pissed off, brooding, pouting, affecting my bladder, my prostate, and other, and other situations that were being mind-body connections that I would recreate over and over. Now right here, here's a key component right here. The pleasure isn't worth the pain. See that right there? The pleasure is not worth the pain. That's the breakthrough factor. When you come to the conclusion, when you're at that breakthrough point, when you're at some level of rock bottom, when you, when you reach that conclusion and you're at that space in consciousness and right there in your pineal gland, you begin to access that rather than continuing to hold on to your left brain over here where the amygdala is now enlarged. And now you have the brain fog and the prefrontal cortex right here. You're not able to discern. And right back here in the hippocampus, you don't have a memory because your memory is clouded. When you start to address this, when you start to have a better understanding that you are not crazy, you don't have ADD, you don't have ADHD, you have a focus challenge because you're not good enough. 
You haven't, you're overwhelmed most of your life because of the events that shaped your feeling. When you let go of medication, stimulation, pontification, hesitation, procrastination, when you let go of all this fuckery that you held on to for so many years and realize that I am good enough, and you do not require permission from your parents, permission from the government. You don't require permission from anyone other than your God. When you when you are when you can stand in when you can cast the burden of the Christ within, when you can let go, when you can let when you can seize the moment, when you can live in the solution, you are truly your best self. And it doesn't matter what's in your bank account, it's what matters is in your emotional account. Because if your emotional account reads zero, you are rock bottom. The pain is great enough, but you don't have to hit rock bottom. It is so overrated. I've done it four or five times. It's, it's, it's exhausting. There's no value in it. There's no value proposition. It doesn't show up in the ledger board. You don't get hugs and high fives or hitting rock bottom. What you do is you get sympathy. And you get empathy, but that's not important. What's important is that you forgive yourself and be your best self. You cannot possibly be your best self in denial. It's not in quantum physics and in mind-body connections. You can't access God by being godless. You can't access higher consciousness by being in anxiety, fear, and doubt. The breath cycle connects you to consciousness. And the breath cycle gives you that space in your body that opens up the pineal gland, that opens up your right brain, your limbic brain, and that's what allows you to access your vagus nerve that connects to your abdomen underneath your abdomen and allows you to be in your whole body. This is the value of cold plunging in today's world. This is the value of a cold shower. So when you take your first cold shower, you're like, oh my God, you're going in fight or flight. Now, I've been taking cold showers. Thank you very much, Josh Morin, for teaching me the value of a cold shower and the value of cold plunging. Josh is one of my clients who is an amazing young man. And so I, I, and you'll see that this has become a trend, the cold showers, the cold plunges. Well, there's a reason because what it does is it raises your testosterone level. And even by being able to put that cold water on the back of your neck and being able to stand in there for 60 to 70 seconds. Now, one, once you cross the bridge of a cold shower, after about 90 days, they don't even appear cold anymore, and they don't even feel cold anymore because you've crossed the bridge of letting go. And so you're not in that rigid stance of, oh my God, this is so cold. So once, you're, once you've crossed that bridge, then you, you can take two or three cold showers a day. It's amazing what that does to your immune system, your lymphatic system, and most, uh, most importantly, your testosterone level begins to change. And then you, you won't require the drugs that you've stood in the line for, for the red pill and the blue pill as frequently. You'll be a lot more in alignment with God and yourself. You won't be dependent upon others. You'll be a lot more independent as you begin to breathe, release, and let go. And you'll begin to eventually change who and what you attract. Here's, here's a word that you really want to address today, disappointment, meaning I didn't get the appointment. I didn't get the job. I didn't get the girl. I didn't get the guy. I didn't get, I didn't get. See, getting is force. And when you let go of being, not having the appointment, and you let go of recognition and reward, you'll be a lot more inspired to live a good life. The sales companies of the world dangle re re reward over your head. And when you understand that that's how they operate, you can still... You can still receive the reward, but your life isn't dependent upon that reward. The watch, the ring, the car, the trip, the rubbing shoulders with the people of influence and affluence. I understand that's all part of the game. I played it for 10 years, but I've also owned my own business for 25 years. Well, task well done is good enough for me. A compliment from a client is not a, is not a Rolex. And if you want a Rolex, buy your own. I mean, that one's a 1961 that I purchased from a vintage jeweler over th over 35 years ago or over 30 years ago and I didn't win it I didn't win it from somewhere I purchased it with my own cash that I did, that I created from my own free enterprise businesses there was no there was no big hug and a high five it was from task well done you can do the same situation reach that point in your life where the pleasure isn't worth the pain 
Master your emotional sobriety one day at a time. Have back-to-back -back days of no relapses, where you go back-to-back -back days without being critical of yourself. You're able to breathe, release, and let go, because you are no longer the mind-body connection to the events that shape your feelings. If you are new to my content and you've not been following my content before, feel free to send me a friend request. I accept all friend requests for anyone that watches me on a Facebook Live. I have plenty of room left in my friends. I've been on Facebook since 2009. Master the skills of letting go. And in your affirmations, use breathing, releasing, letting go. And I'm always letting go. I want to thank you for being here this afternoon. If you have not accessed a free 20-minute coaching call from me and you've considered hiring a coach or hiring me, I offer 20 to 30-minute discovery calls where there's no, there's no, there is no requirement for you to hire me. If you want to speak to me, feel free to reach out to me and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. You can also go to my website and right on my website, it, you can fill out a request for a free 20-minute coaching site at goldenmastermind.com. Janet, good to see you to this afternoon. It's good to see all of you here this afternoon. Cheryl Lynn, let's see, who do we have here today? Jamie Allison Binko. Jamie, send me a friend request. Gabriel, send me a friend request. Stephanie, Josh, good to see you. Peter, Diana, good to see you. Good to see all my coaching clients. Nestor, Aaron, thank you so much. Eric, Jennifer, thank you for your compliments. Carlene, always good to see you. Matt, Josh, Scott Lucas, James Pryor, Debbie Fair, Tyrone, Deborah, good to see all of you here. Caroline, Krista, good to see you, Krista. Susan, always good to see you. Kawhi, Deanna, I'm honored to be your coach. Lynette, always honored to see you here. Carl, thank you for hiring me to be your coach. Beth Devine, 13 years, baby, long time. Matt Smith, Matt Smith has seen me speak over 50 times. And Charles Howell, thank you for hiring me to be your coach. A privilege and a pleasure to be here with you this afternoon. I'll be back on Facebook Live tonight at 9 p.m. Peace, 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. You have a great afternoon.